Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to the Fancy Files podcast. I am your host, Greg Descott, and I have with me quite a few co-hosts today. We have a uh, full team. Uh, I have with me the marvelous Mick. Hi, thank you for having me again. You're welcome. We're glad you're here. Do you feel rejoiced? I feel rejoiced. Good. You look rejoiced. <laughs> thank you. You look rejoicing. As well. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's good. We also have, and I know everyone has been missing them deeply, the power couple. Uh, there is no other power couple like them, and it is the Robin Robinator and the Ezra Saurus Rex. We call him Rexy. And Robin the Flobin. I don't know where Flobin came from, but... We're trying to figure out if you're trying to get in or out of the flow. You can let us know. I'm currently in the flow. I have to get out of the flow. Right. Yeah. Perfect. And how are you, Ezra? I'm uh, doing all right. Lovely weather today. Yes. So here's some really cool information for all our faithful fancy phyllites. There we got a name for our faithful listening audience. Uh, We are actually recording... Not in our usual place, which we're not going to tell you where it is, because we don't want anyone crashing it when we're doing it. That would be really weird. Uh, (laughs) But we are actually in the eastern townships, uh, recording near a town called Richmond uh, at a Christian campground. And so this place that we're recording from actually was kind of the birthplace, in a way, of what became Christian service. So that's kind of cool, going back to our uh, spiritual roots, so to speak. And one nine represent. There we go. And um, <laughs> to have a team that has been together for quite a while, uh, it's very exciting. And you know, God has been has been using us, and, and has been. Uh, and I know that this place for a lot of people is is an incredible blessing for people who are on this uh, podcast, and we know for some people who listen to it, and some of our people that we know. Uh, this is a very special place, so uh, we're kind of we're we're excited. We had a great weekend, you know. God was moving in time of worship, so we thought we'd share that with you guys, uh, those who are listening, to to know that you know we do take very much our walks with God seriously, and and to have an opportunity to come together and just worship God, uh, and and to share is uh, is incredible. I don't know if anyone wants to elaborate on on that or. No, but it does feel great to be here again, um, especially after two years. Um, you know, what we've been doing essentially started here in 2015, and here we are again, uh, continuing this, I guess, a different chapter of uh, what God has put in our hearts, uh, well, a long time ago. Yeah, I haven't been here since, like, 2016. So to come back after like five or six years and to just see how I've grown faithfully and spiritually is like mind boggling because I'd never imagine where I would be, you know, and especially with Christian service becoming what it has um, for us as a team, like it, it's great just to see our growth and to see what God's doing. Yeah. And I don't think, um, Mick would have thought when he started what was at the time fancy, uh, which is kind of where we get our name from for the podcast that it would have what, six years later, six years on the road become what it is today where we are this ministry that, you know, people will ask, you know, well, what is, what is your ministry? Well, we're a ministry that believes the Bible is the Word of God. Amen. And everything, and the sufficiency of Scripture, the authority of Scripture, and everything flows from that and what we do mm-hmm. and what we teach and and how we do church. Because uh, actually with Christian service, we do what well, we were before the pandemic hit and kind of threw some wrenches in our in our engine. We were meeting once a month and having... Christian services. That's where the name, <laughs> where the name Christian service actually comes from was, was that, and then we just kind of kept it. Uh, so, you know, it's incredible uh, what God has, has done and the faithfulness of the Lord and, and just, you know, when you're faithful, 
when you have something, God will give you a piece. This is what I want you to do. But he doesn't show you the whole bit of it. Maybe for some people he does that. But I think in most cases he doesn't. And for Mick, you know, it was just started with, you know, Christian service is important. Like when I say Christian service, I don't mean what became the name of it. But, but Christian community is important. Mm -hmm. And it grew from there. Yeah, honestly, we pretty much just assumed it'd be like five or six dudes in a basement with candles. Just being like... <laughs> Let's praise God together. And then it really grew and didn't stop growing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So today uh, we have, we are starting a new discussion topic and we're going to be looking at, and what we want to do going forward is, and, and I'm not saying it's going to be like this every podcast, we might break off and do something different, but we want to go through some core doctrines of scripture mm. and what would be one of the most, the most, in my mind, essential is how is a person saved? Doctrine of salvation, soteriology. Yeah. Uh, in the church world, and I want to say this because I want to make sure people understand when I say church. I don't want people thinking I'm talking about my church or I'm talking about a specific church. So if you hear me saying the word church, please don't be like, oh, he's talking about his home church. Because we don't want to make another t-shirt. <laughs> of all the things that we get accused of saying. We'll be like, yeah, there's some people in apostasy. Oh, he just said that that there's people in his church in apostasy. No, we <laughs> didn't. If there is, I... I Maybe, I but, I, you know. I don't know. I'm not going to start pointing out this person to start counting, but we're not talking about a specific church. We're talking about what is Christianity uh, as a whole. So there is a lot of confusion in the church world as to this doctrine. And we don't want to talk about what men say, because uh, we can go into all the movements that have happened in Christianity, and we can talk about the Reformation, and we can talk about all that, but we want to talk about what Scripture says. And if we do end up getting off track and what the Reformation and all that, well, forgive us. But we're going to try to stick with the Word of God and look at what God says, because again, Christian service believes in the sufficiency of Scripture. Christian service believes the Bible is the Word of God. Amen. Amen. It is the only Word of God. This is what we believe. So if you're going to listen to us and you don't believe that, please don't get triggered. You know now what we believe. We're not hiding it. You know we're not trying to we're not trying to be offensive to you. Mm -hmm. Like like oh you don't believe that? Well we're gonna well, you know I don't know make fun of you. No we're not doing that. But you need to know what we believe. And we, since we believe it's the Word of God, since we believe this is God's revelation to man, God's perfect revelation to man, therefore what God says about salvation in His Word, we need to look at that. Because if we're wrong on that, according to the Bible, the eternal consequences are severe and everlasting. It's not a whoopsie, you know, and get fined or go to jail for a year. That's not what that's not what the Bible talks about. So we're gonna look into that. And so today we're gonna to be reading from Ephesians, and I guess the next few podcasts that we do, we'll see how far it goes. Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through ten, and I'd like to get Mr. Mickey to read that. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Thank you very much. Okay. So right off the bat, as we're reading this, we see what what Paul's trying to say. Paul, in writing this letter, uh, and in Ephesians, I mean, I wish we could go through the whole book. And I know personally... Uh, some of us have studied this, but looking at this, you can tell like this is very important. Uh, obviously, it's there because in the church world at the time and, and all throughout history that there were people that were teaching a false view of salvation. So Paul obviously would have gone to this church and would have taught them this is what it means to be saved. And we're going to talk about that. What does it mean to be saved? 
And then, of course, you know, Paul would go to these churches and he would preach at these churches and he would preach on salvation. And then, you know, then he would go off and, and continue his, you know, apostolic missionary work. And then other guys would either raise up within the church or come in. Uh, some of them called the Judaizers, some of them were the Gnostics, and there were so many of them. Uh, but those are two that come to mind. And they would come in and then they would start teaching something else or they would add something to it. And in reality, nothing has changed today because we still have the apostles' teachings that God gave to them to share to the church, to the churches, to his people, and, and to the whole world. Because this message is for the whole world. It's not just not just for, for us in the church. Um, but even today within the church world, there are those who are coming in and they are bringing, as the Bible says, damnable heresies. They're bringing in destructive doctrine that may look good, it may sound good, it might feel good, but what it does is a person who hears that and accepts it and believes it, even if their motives are pure, the end result could be that person in the end doesn't actually know Jesus Christ. It is not saved and dies eternally lost without God. And the Bible says that those who die eternally lost are spent eternity in hell. Or in the end, the lake of fire, as the end of Revelation talks about. So this brings up the question, what does it mean to be saved? What does it mean to be saved? What does it mean to be saved? Well, uh... As we're taught elsewhere in Scripture, right, the wages of sin is death. But the question comes from that, that verse, well, if a wage is what one is owed for their actions, who is giving us this wage of death? And ultimately, uh, if we look through the Bible cover to cover, the one who's giving us this death for our sin is God. God, as the almighty, perfect judge, sentences us to eternal death and damnation in hell for sin. So if the wages of sin is death, what are we being saved from? We're being saved, when we turn to Christ, our, our salvation is from God's holy, just wrath against our sin. And that, that's something I feel that a lot of Western culture does not preach and honestly has probably even forgotten that we're not saved from our sins we're saved from the wrath of God for our sins mm -hmm. yeah and I'm glad that you bring that up because you know looking at verse 8 right away for by grace are you saved through faith not of yourself it is a gift of God yeah. okay we read that wow that's really cool okay but as one of the, I don't know if it was, it might have been Ravenhill in a sermon he was preaching. He says, okay, are, are, what are you saved from? What does that mean? Saved. What does that mean? Because for, and, and this is why it's important we need to define terms. And we need to find, define terms biblically. Because if not, that word can mean anything to anybody even like saying I believe in Jesus okay and a lot of people like just there's, there's so many people on this planet that say I believe in Jesus great who is Jesus to you and then you start defining that there's belief systems out there that will teach that Jesus is the brother of Satan Wow where does it say that in the Bible it doesn't but there is you know, cults out there and false religious systems that have their own writings, they add on to it and say these things. Or they'll say like Jesus, you know, was once an angel who then became Jesus and now is back to an angel again. Or they might have some new age version of Jesus where it's a spiritual Christ consciousness, but it, but Jesus himself was not actually the Messiah. So it's important that, you know, or to somebody, yeah, yeah, I love Jesus. And to them, it's their gardener, Jesus. Uh, 
or their neighbor Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> that's why we need to define terms biblically. Who is this Jesus? And the same thing goes for what does it mean to be saved? But before we can really answer that question, we have to look into why do we need to be saved? Yeah. Why does a person need to be saved? Because and, and you kind of you kind of touched on it a bit, and and maybe you know I'll bring this up, and if anyone wants to add, please do. Basically, today the idea of of coming to Jesus is like you have a phone and you have all these apps in your phone, and Jesus is just another app to add into your phone, another kind of addition to your life. Your life is pretty good, but come to Jesus; He'll make it even better. And that's in some circles how the gospel is presented. Jesus will make your life better. And then you'll have some people, well, yeah, I mean, I love my life and I want my life to be better. Mm -hmm. And then you can get into, well, Jesus can make you rich. Jesus can make you powerful. It's all about you and what Jesus can do for you. It kind of reminds me of that quote that JFK said, you know, not ask not what you can do or, or what, you know, your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And that's like, we kind of need someone to get up and be like, no, it's not about what you get out of it it's not all like all of that like whoa, whoa what can god add to my life to make my life so much more awesome than it is now did you any of you guys want to add something to that well i think if we look at the you know the greater picture uh you have a puritan that once said that what we contribute to our salvation is the sin that made it necessary right um it comes down to an issue of sin first and foremost and because of that i think it's important to understand that sin uh, like you said earlier isn't like an like other uh, heresies right it's not an oopsie it is a uh, a big deal and so um a sin is an offense to a holy god that we have committed now obviously um I believe that there are right two sins that we are forgiven of at the cross, the sin of Adam and then our continual sin. Do you want to explain the sin of Adam? Uh, well, in the garden, when uh, Eve took of the fruit and then uh, gave that fruit to Adam, um, the fruit being the only thing they weren't allowed to touch, uh, it is essentially cursed us and the entire tree it poisoned the well and um so the entirety of humanity has been under the power of death ever since the power of sin and because of that um well we need to be freed from it we need to be saved from it so that isn't of our doing but we are already under that and then add to it every single sin that you have done and christ says that you know you've broken one command you've broken them all and so for us, we're not we're doubly under sin. We're we're twice guilty. And Christ pays that entire price. You know, we are saved from God, by God, for God, mm -hmm. for his glory and his glory alone. Yeah, and I think that statement right there will throw a lot of people off. Why do we need to be saved from God? Because in the salvation message, it is God who brings to us the good news. It is God who is the one that does the work of salvation. Why do we need to be saved from him? Yeah, and I think that comes down to, you know, what I was saying before, right? Like, this is a teaching that the church in Western culture doesn't teach anymore. But, like, sin is punished by the wrath of God. And just like we don't punish the crime of theft... We punish the thief. The thief committed the crime. The justice system punishes the thief. And in the same way, when we commit our sins, God, the holy God, who is the judge of all creation in his perfect justice, must punish us. So when we're being saved, we're not being saved from our sin. We're not being saved from ourselves we're being saved from the wrath of god that we justly and rightly deserve for our sin and the reason that like we're saved is because christ came in and took our punishment on our behalf 
Yeah, so the, that debt is paid. The wrath was satisfied on the cross. Yeah, um, going off of what Greg said about how, um, like, we are the ones that owe God, not God owes us. Once we're saved, like, once we really take a look at who we are as, like, a humanity, like, um, like Mick said, from the very beginning we were fallen and sin was who we were. Um, so, like, we are the total opposite of God. We deserve nothing but wrath because we oppose him and it's in our nature. But, like, once we truly, like, accept him and believe him as savior, like, it's such, like, it's a gift. It's the gift of God. Salvation. So, like, we owe everything to him. Like, why in the world would he owe us? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Now, I want to uh, read something from Romans chapter 3. Because Paul, in in going through Romans, and, and some people believe it's like, it, it for like a systematic theology that's basically one of the strongest you're going to see in the Bible, where he goes through and lays out why we need salvation, but specifically why we need it to be grace, why it has to be all of God and not of us. And then, oh, people are going to hear wrath, they're going to hear sin, and they're not going to understand what we're talking about, or they're like, oh, why is this, why are you making it so heavy? It has to be heavy. We have to understand the crime we committed to understand our need for grace. Because if we don't understand our need for grace, we really don't understand why we need Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so Paul goes here and he, and he writes in, in Romans chapter 3, starting at verse 10, he says, as, writ as it is written, and by the way, just trigger warning, I'm reading from the King James Version. So, <laughs> Well, if it's good enough for the apostles, it's good enough for thee. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say it. It says, there is none righteous, no, not one. So right away. This idea, no, 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 I'm not that bad. Hold on a second. The Word of God says there's none righteous. Yes, that includes, that's everyone, but that's you. You're not righteous. You're the one that has, has sinned against God. And then it says, there's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. They're all gone out of the way. They're all together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good and no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher, and with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of apps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their sweet, their feet sorry, are swift to, sh to shed blood, and destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know... That what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. And then it goes on to say, in verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now Paul presents a picture that is very, um, how can we say it? It's not a pretty picture of the state of humanity. And it's that in the sight of God, this is how God sees us. This is how God views us. Is that we have, we're not even seeking after him in our own selves. We may mm -hmm. think that we're seeking after him, but we're actually not seeking after him. So, this idea that, well, we're really good in of ourselves and that, you know, we're, we're just kind of like, you know, just need God to come and, and, you know, like, just take us by the hand. You know, we kind of just messed up the room a bit. No, that's not it at all. It's that we have, there's this dirtiness within us, this ugliness, this sin that is against God, that is opposed to God, and that wants nothing to do with God. That is the state 
of our hearts because in reality when you start teaching this to people who do not actually who are not actually saved who are not actually born again they get very upset why because they've come to the fact that this God that they created that they're comfortable with who loves them and uh, or who accepts them in their sin we don't want to hear that we don't want a God who will who's okay with our sin or we want a God that's fine with our sin well, if we go back to Romans, right? Uh, Romans 14, uh, 23, the last part of that really puts the emphasis on why um, no one is good. Mm-hmm. It says that for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin, right? And so you can do a lot of good things, and, and good I mean by like earthly t- terms. Yes. We can do uh, great things in this world. We can lead major charities and, and do a lot of that but if it is not preceded by faith and faith in christ a true faith in christ jesus then it is sin it is counted as sin and so already from the get-go our perception of what is sin isn't only oopsies towards god it is beyond that it is anything that is not done under god yeah well on top of that in the same thread jesus says that our good works, the things we look at and say, oh man, this is so great, look at me, I'm such a good, filthy rags. And in fact, even if you look in the original like translation, it's not even just filthy rags, it's menstruation rags. The stuff that you look at and you're just like, gross, throw that away, get, get this away from me. Like, that's how God looks at our good works that are outside of what his will has called us to do outside of what we do in his strength our good deeds are horrifyingly disgusting he doesn't it's not of him he doesn't want it and so if we're trying to live holy good lives without christ without god's will and holy spirit working through us it's just disgusting he doesn't want it yeah, so as we're coming to an end of this first part of a series we're doing on salvation, and I know you're probably thinking, wow, that's pretty heavy for uh, first podcast, the podcast of sin. <laughs> but we need to lay that foundation. We're not stopping. We're not just doing a podcast on sin and moving on and being like, figure it out. No, no. <laughs> there's, there's good news. Amen. It's, it's great news. It's the gospel, and I can't wait to get into that. But to lay that foundation and to summarize everything, one, every single person, because of what Adam did in his rebellion against God, were all born in sin. We're born with a nature that is opposed to God. We're the ones that are opposed to God. Not God being, oh, I woke up one day and decided I don't want anything to do with you. No, it's us. We're the ones, because of our nature, that don't want anything to do with God uh, and, and our sins because... Because God is holy, and because he's good, our sins have to be dealt with. It has to be punished. And our sins, like Mick said, it's not oopsies. These are terrible acts that we commit and hurt a thrice holy God. As we get the revelation uh, in Isaiah, where Isaiah sees the angels crying, holy, 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 as we see it in the book of Revelation. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We get that and we sing a song in church. Holy, holy, holy. Where do you think that comes from? That's not just filling in space. That comes from the word of God. He's telling us he's thrice holy. And if you stand before a thrice holy God in your sin, you're it's not going to be pretty. You're, you're going to be all oh, undone. You're not going to stand there and be like, I'm going to tell him off. No, you won't. No, you are guilty. You are guilty. 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 Yeah. So, I think, I think we've made our point. It's in our nature. It's our acts. And as we end to this, this first podcast in this series, stick with us. This was... Heavy for you, please go to the next one as we're going to talk about grace. Because you may hear this and be like, oh my goodness. You know, I'm a sinner. What do I do? Well, I can tell you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not going to end this podcast without saying that. (laughs) It's not a spoiler alert. We're Christian. 
Paul said, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. Right? And that, that, that's the core. That's the very foundation. How do I be saved? Believe that Jesus is Lord. And not just, oh yeah, he, he's kind of cool. I, I follow his teachings a bit. No, no, no. He's Lord. Like, he makes the decisions, not you. Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Paul also said if there's no resurrection, our faith is completely in vain and we are to be the most pitied of all people. So we need to confess Jesus as Lord and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead. And we will be saved from the wrath of God. Yeah, and repent of your sin. Yeah. If, you're under, if you're under conviction and you see that you need a Savior that you've offended God and that you deserve the wrath of God, you deserve hell. Yeah. Confess your sin to him and believe what Jesus did by dying on the cross and being resurrected three days later. That God accepted the sacrifice of Christ. And in the next podcast, we're going to talk about grace. We're going to get into more details about that and all the wonderful scripture verses uh, and all the great promises regarding salvation. Because though we have the promise that those who believe those who believe are saved and they will go to heaven and we're going to get into that so that is our fancy files podcast for today uh we thank you for taking the time to listen to us uh your co-host greg the scott <laughs> along with uh my man mickey g thank you for having me <laughs> we've got the ezra source rex have a good one and miss rubino thanks for having me take care and god bless guys bye <laughs>